Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today we're going to have some fun with brand new archival inks and brand new stamps with coordinating dies from Tim Holtz and Simon Says Stamp. So first up, here are the six new colors of archival ink and six new colors of stickles. We're going to be using almost all of these products in today's video. First up, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of Yupo paper here. And I am gonna take the archival ink in the color um, Beach Cruiser, which it is totally Beach Cruiser. And we're going to add some rubbing alcohol to this. And the reason being is that archival ink is not gonna be able to move like a water-based ink because these are not water-based inks. They can be used with water-based inks for things like acrylics and watercolor, but you definitely want to use rubbing alcohol in a well-ventilated area if you want to do this technique. So very much like you would with um, alcohol inks. And if you would prefer, you can use the re-inkers, but you're gonna get a much more concentrated color. So I like just pressing my ink pad into a glass surface, adding a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I just have it in a spray bottle here. And then I am dipping my Yupo paper. Now I did do two coats of Beach Cruiser to darken that a little bit and to really get some fun effects. I am heating it with a heat tool in between each application of color to speed up that drying process. Plus I think you just really get some fun results. I'm doing two backgrounds at once. One is a full four and a quarter by five and a half inch background, which will be the background of our card. The other one's a smaller piece, and that is where we're going to be stamping some beautiful butterflies here in just a minute. I'm also using this beautiful purple is called aubergine, and we're using mountain lake. And we're just building color, adding color into all of those little areas. I know that it looks really messy at first, but just keep building, keep playing. On the Yupo paper, it will kind of play and move if you add more alcohol ink to it, which you're gonna see here in a little bit. The goal here is what all can you do with, uh, with archival inks? Um, everything from the backgrounds to the background stamping to the stamping of our images to the greeting are stamped with the same inks today, which I think is kind of fun. So we have some backgrounds here and now I'm going to take a little bit more of the beachcomber and I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, I wasn't totally loving how that ended up looking. Oh, I think that's going to look even better. So just keep playing, keep building color. I would suggest with the Yupo paper, if you're using a heat tool, don't move your, you know, or don't hold it too long onto your paper. It's going to dry really, really quick. It is alcohol. Okay. I love that. I think it's amazing. It's time to have some fun with backgrounds and some new stamps and dies. So Simon Says Stamp has been creating some awesome coordinating dies. Can we get a woohoo for that from Simon Says Stamp? And so what we're gonna do is place our background right in a misty. I have a sticky mat in here. And we are going to take some of these absolutely stunning designs from the Botanic Collage. This probably is my favorite stamp set from the release. And we are going to place them right on the background and stamp these with Beachcomber ink right on the background. Now, I want to say one thing about stamping on Yupo paper. It isn't probably going to be as crisp as if you stamped these on a traditional cardstock or other types of cardstock. 
That is okay for me. This is a background element. We are gonna keep building and playing, but I do want you to note that so that you're not surprised by the end result. It goes on pretty crisp, but kind of as this dries, it really doesn't, um, it, it just kind of softens, I suppose, is what I wanna say. So after we have our background stamped like this, I want to add even more. Um, I kind of thought it would be fun to look like it has a crackle effect. And even though this is not a brand new product, this is something that has been out for a while. I went to my Simon Says Stamp background stamps, which are amazing, and I grabbed the crackle background, which is one of my all-time favorites. We are gonna be stamping this right over the top of everything with the archival graphite ink, and this is going to give a very soft crackle effect. Now, I did use second generation stamping. I was a little bit nervous about going full force with the graphite ink, so I put a scrap piece of paper over the top and stamped it off once, and then I took the second generation inking and stamped that over the background, and oh my gosh, you guys, that's the perfect effect. This crackle background, if you don't have it already, I highly recommend picking it up. If you want to create a crackle effect with a stamp and not try to create a crackle effect, that is your stamp. Next, we are going to take butterflies from the watercolor bundle and we are going to stamp these on that other piece of Yupo paper that we created the watercolor effects on. And I will be stamping three of the butterflies. We are going to use the colors graphite, the gray color, mountain mist, and aubergine for this. We're gonna stamp each butterfly in its own color right on the background. Now, why did I stamp these on the same paper or same type of background that I just did for the background of our card? I wanted the quote unquote white areas of each of these butterflies to have some sort of that same watercolor effect to the background. I really felt like they needed to have the same kind of look. I didn't want it to be stark white. That's what I wanna say. So that is why I chose to just, while I was making that other background, take a scrap piece of Yupo and do the same thing. Next, I have die cut each of my butterflies. I did dry them a little bit because they do stay a little wet, uh, not for very long. They do dry pretty quickly, but I sped that up with my heat tool. And I've die cut them using those brand new coordinating dies from Simon Says Stamp. I know you guys are going to absolutely love the coordinating dies. You got have already let us know that you absolutely love the coordinating dies for Tim's stamp set. So thank you, thank you to Simon Says Stamp for these amazing dies. Then I felt like I needed to grunge up my background even more. I mean, you guys, this was total playtime. Is there anything better than crafty playtime? I pressed a little bit more of Beachcomber onto an acrylic block, added some rubbing alcohol, picked it up with a paintbrush, and I am spattering my background. Now, what this is gonna do on the Yupo paper is it's going to create that little bit of mist, and it's going to create these droplet effects. I don't think it shows super great. Um, I'll hold it up to the camera, but you'll also notice it in the finished card, but little droplets of alcohol ink color. I probably wouldn't have had, I probably could have just used the rubbing alcohol and spattered it. I was trying to get some like dark little spatters. I don't really know if that worked, but see how it's moving the ink? It's moving that archival ink uh, away and leaving little droplet designs, and I love it. Next, we're going to place some foam adhesive underneath the wings of our butterflies and put liquid adhesive down the body of our butterfly and pop these in place on our card. I like to do this so that it looks like the wings are um, flying and that the body is attached directly to the card base. And we're just going to position these right on our background. How fun is this? Oh my goodness, you guys. I This was just such a fun playtime type project. I love crafty playtime. So hopefully it inspires you to maybe grab some of your stamps and dies and 
And if you already have some archival inks or you've picked up these new colors to try something similar. And I know everyone loves a good Tim Holtz stamp set. So once we have our butterflies in place, I am going to go ahead and create an alternate colorway background. Because even though my first inclination is always to go towards the aquas <laughs> and blues, uh, I love myself some good reds and pinks too. Oh, before we do that, I want this to start drying. We are going to take some stickles. Now there are six brand new colors of stickles and I am going to take the graphite and the mountain lake and also the aubergine and we are going to use these to decorate our butterfly. So for the body of the butterfly, I did graphite. For the wings, just some decorative elements on the wings. I'll either use graphite, aubergine, or um, mountain lake, right? Yes. And we're gonna simply add in some decorative elements. Very easy, very simple. Stickles have been around for such a long time. They continue to be such an amazing staple and product in your craft stash. In fact, I was with some friends at a cross-stitch retreat several weeks ago and something came up about stickles. I can't even remember what we were talking about uh, making. And we were trying to think of the name of it and it took me overnight, but the next day I was like, it's stickles. <laughs> I didn't even look it up. And then it was so funny um, because these brand new stickles came in the mail when I got home and I was, it was just kind of a funny coincidence, I guess is what I want to say, but I love them. The precision of adding these to your projects, just make sure you let them sit and completely dry. Uh, you want to set it aside, not put your fingers or hand in it until it's all the way dry, but you're left with a beautiful glittery result with no mess. No, you know, glitter shook on and making a disaster everywhere. So adding all of the little detail, oh my gosh, and I'm just having fun with it, just kind of wherever. Super, super pretty. Next, we are going to be using a combination of cayenne, wine cellar, and maybe even a little aubergine for our red background. So we're gonna pull in the purple. Now I wanna tell you guys something so funny that I found about these backgrounds. When you put the color down, it does not look like what it ended up drying as, I didn't think. I kind of felt like it looked so crazy when I first put the color down and I, almost to the effect that I was like, oh, am I even gonna like this? But the minute I started drying it, I was like, oh my word, this is so pretty. So definitely kind of, you know, give it a second. <laughs> Because look how orangey it makes that background. Not that there's anything wrong with orange, but that's just not what I was expecting. <laughs> so I am going to keep adding color. And I maybe didn't add aubergine to this one. I can't remember. So now I'm going to do the very same thing to this background. I thought I did, but Perhaps I didn't, you guys. And I was gonna use those hearts, that's why you're seeing them, but I actually opted to just do another butterfly card. This time, I'm not going to use the same background stamps from the botanical set. We're gonna use this large floral with the text, and I'm going to stamp this with cayenne. And I'm only gonna do one, just one little grungy element. We're still gonna add the crackle. We're still gonna add the splatter. I think that the alcohol splatter shows up even better on this one. Um, in real life, it really shows up on the, the blue background as well. Now this is, you can see how crisp that floral is right here, but in the finished card, how kind of faded out and almost more abstract. That is how it's going to dry. Here's my crackle background, same thing. We're gonna use second generation stamping for our crackle because we definitely don't want this to be super, super dark. So let's just stamp that off once and then just stamp it here on our background. Very, very light. 
but I don't want it to detract and take away from the beauty of our background or butterflies at all. Okay, once we have our background, we are ready to add that same splatter. And, and this is where I use the aubergine. I couldn't remember. I'm going to splatter some of these little purple droplets. I really don't think it shows up all that great. Just use rubbing alcohol. I mean, there might be some little purple splatters. Oh yeah, there are. They're very tiny and very light. See how in some of those open areas, look at that awesome splatter where the ink just starts moving away from where you've added it. Oh my word, you guys, I just loved it so much. It turned out really, really cool. So I went pretty heavy with the splatter on this one. We'll let that dry. Oh, it's gonna be so, so cool. And then we're going to stamp some butterflies. And again, we're going to do three different colors. We're going to have cayenne, wine cellar, and graphite. I've die cut them with the coordinating dies. And then we're going to do the same thing with foam adhesive underneath the wings and glue the bodies down. We're going to be using some stickles to embellish these as well. This time using, again, graphite and wine cellar and cayenne. You know, I think I didn't actually use, yeah, I didn't use the beach cruiser stickles, which is so funny. I'm sure I will. Beach Cruiser was my favorite color. This is an amazing archival release. And also just an amazing Tim Holtz Simon Says Stamp collab too. Okay, once we have all of these down, it is time to grab some sentiments. Now for sentiments today, there is another Tim Holtz Simon collaboration. It is the Penance Bundle. So it's awesome greetings. And I love that there's the penance and then the small sentiment strip that goes with it. However, the penance did not really work with my cards right here, but I will be using them in other cards later on. I just couldn't, it, the pennant just didn't work with this design for me but some of the sentiments did. So we're gonna do simple, simple sentiments. We have a lot going on. We have really fun backgrounds. We have really fun butterflies. So I felt like a simple sentiment strip and a few gems is all we need to finish off these card designs. So I will be stamping a couple of phrases from that penance stamp set using graphite ink, but we're gonna stamp these on Nina 110 pound weight cardstock. We want our sentiments to be very nice and crisp. So no Yupo paper here at all. And I'm going to stamp those, die cut those with the coordinating pennant die. Let's go ahead and add our bodies of our butterflies first. I kind of forgot I took, I did definitely take my time adding in all of these stickles. I wanted it to be very precise. And I think it dresses up the butterflies beautifully. I'm just gonna widen that body a little bit. There we go. And we will be popping up our greetings with foam adhesive. So you can see, I'm just gonna use an acrylic block. I didn't even bother to use my Misty for this. But Simon Says Stamp has two new trios of their uh, rainbow splash, or no, positively dazzling gems. And you guys, they are gorgeous. I used all six. Three on each. I think I used all six. I had to use them all. They are absolutely amazing, so pretty, Lots of fun colors, and I felt like they perfectly coordinated with these archival inks. Such a fun, happy accident. Gotta love when that happens. We're using the Cherry, Lilac, Taffy, Mandarin, Royal, and Surf. So obviously Royal, Surf, and I'm gonna have to look. Sorry for the shaky shake here. Maybe Taffy. And 
Those are going to be on the blue background. Lilac, Mandarin, and Cherry are all going to go on the red background. So I'm trying to line up my sentiments perfectly straight. Sometimes that can be a challenge. And once we have that right where it goes, I have three triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp all prepped and ready to go. I am going to place three colors of these positively dazzling gems in each of the triangle trays. Use my favorite Simon Says Stamp embellishment tool wand to perfectly place these little gems right where I want them to go on each background. If you don't have these triangle trays, they are something I use like 95% of the time. If because I'm usually adding tiny little embellishments at the end of each project. And these little trays, you guys, are workhorses. What is fantastic is the little container, it can be a pain to A, pick the little gems out of those containers. So it's nice to have them in a little tray. But then the great thing about these trays is that you can funnel them right back into the storage container when you're done crafting. And that is my absolute favorite thing. I'm using the glue press to add tiny dabs of glue all throughout my card backgrounds. I mean, you guys, look how fun these are. I just had the best time playing with inks and doing something a little different, um, a little different for me, maybe not ink blended. Um, you know, not just die cutting and building a die cut background, not coloring, just playtime with inks. And I really think one of the best things about this project is that everything, all of the ink supplies for this was created with the six inks from archival. Everything from the background to the stamping, to the embellishments, to the greetings. And there's not very many times that we can say that in crafting. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of two cards featuring brand new products from the Simon Says Stamp Be Bold release and new archival ink products and stickles from Ranger. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new paper crafting video or I go live. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.